from Michigan is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one, two minutes in revising and my remarks. Gentlemen is recognized. America's fiscal trajectory is unsustainable. The threat of a potential U.S. government debt default plays into China's long-standing grand strategy for expanding its global role and diminishing our influence. It's a matter of national security to get this under control. When small businesses and family in my district and all across the country, across the country experience financial problems, they tighten their belts, they change their spending habits, and they expect Washington to do the same. But instead, President Joe Biden stood in this very chamber, gaslighted, fear-mongered, and claimed Republicans want to sunset Social Security and Medicare, Why there are attacks on Republicans all over the country on this very same lie. Why? To frighten seniors and hope the stampede would block Republicans from reining in his destructive runaway spending. That's why I introduced the Protecting Social Security and Medicare Act the very next day. I spoke with leadership in the following weeks about taking these very important critical programs off the negotiation table, and that's exactly what leadership did. As we debate today, seniors can rest assured that the promises Republicans made to them will not be broken in this debate. I'm also voting for this bill because it does not include cuts to the Pentagon's budget, particularly to Selvage Air National Guard Base, a pillar of my district, a crown jewel of the state of Michigan, and critical to our national defense against northern aggressors like China, Russia, and North Korea who may threaten us from abroad. It is reasonable to disagree with any specific debt ceiling approach, and I'm looking forward to continuing the debate. But if President Biden continues to refuse to come to the table and negotiate in good faith, we will achieve a historic default, putting our country's national security and families like mine and yours at economic risk in the future. Mr. Speaker, I yield back the remainder of my time.